Hey guys, it's Icon. Welcome back to my channel. This video has been a long time coming and I was really deciding whether to make it or not. But then some people who watch my UCAT video have updated me on how it's been going for them and they have all excelled and done really well so I've decided um, I want to give a few more tips on the beam at this time and hopefully that can help someone. The reason why I hesitated a lot to make this video is I didn't feel as confident when I was going into the BMAT as I did going into the UCAT and that was primarily because my BMAT was at the end of October so year 13 had started, I started doing schoolwork, I'd been doing my UCAT um, statement at the same time, my personal statement so the BMAT wasn't my only pro my only focus. And I did get um, offers to come to interview from all of the universities that I applied to that did BMAT so it's not that I did badly it's just I think in general people are more uncertain about the BMAT because more things are going on so I'll put a list of unis that consider BMAT here there's not as many as there are for UCAT so um, you don't have to take the BMAT if you don't want to apply to any of these medical schools just as I guess a safety net if you didn't do as well as you expected in the UCAT even though I'm releasing this video a bit later there are still plenty of time to start revising for the BMAT. I didn't really start properly properly working and revising for the BMAT until I started year 13. So this was in September. So you have plenty of time, it's not too late. So I want to start with how the BMAT is structured. So for the BMAT there's three sections. Section 1 and Section 2 are multiple choice and Section 3 is essay based. Um, for Section 1 you get one hour and that is problem solving, um, data questions and understanding arguments. Um, I'll go into the depth of each section later on. Section two is scientific knowledge and applications which is basically GCSE science and maths and that is 30 minutes and then the essay is another 30 minutes so I didn't realize like how the logistics of this would work until I actually got into the exam room but they give you only section one of the paper you do that for an hour after an hour they take it away and give you section two in my head I was thinking okay maybe since it's not on a computer system I can use a bit less time in the first section a bit more time in the second section they don't let you do that so Although this is a paper test, it still is very strict timing and you need to be aware of this when you're preparing. So yeah, that is kind of how it works. And also, you're not allowed a calculator, which pff, that scared me for so long because even in GCSE maths you're allowed a calculator and now you're telling me I have to do GCSE maths, GCSE physics, GCSE chemistry, GCSE biology and no calculator. But it is possible. Another thing I want to talk about before I like go into depth about each section is the resources available. So it's kind of like similar to what I spoke about in my UCAP video, but the program called Medify is an online program and they have a lot of practice papers, a lot of practice questions, and then they give you the answers with the explanation of why it was that answer. It's really good to do that first to just to get used to the way all of the questions are and kind of work that early and then move on to paper in the book so this is the equivalent of the UCAT book that I had in the last um, video that I did on this and this is very similar it has introductions to each section where they explain what it is they explain the tips and give you some common threads that they picked up throughout analyzing the BMATs over the years. That was really beneficial for me. Also, they have the answers at the back. They have 700 practice questions, as they say on the front. And yeah, they also have, for section three, they have some practice essay questions for you. And they have some example essays with analyzing from examiners after each essay. So that's really good. So you can kind of see how they look at an essay, what they're looking for. But we'll go into the criteria of that later. Another thing that I should mention before we start is how they score you. So, I believe the section 1 is out of 35 questions. But you have 60, se 60 seconds? 60 minutes for this, so about 2 minutes per question. I'm sorry, the light is changing, the sun is just jumping in and out and doing whatever. Section 2, you have 27 questions, I think, and 
30 minutes so just like pretty much a minute per sec um a minute per question and so the rule mark we got for section one and two is equated to a scale from one to nine and nine being the best kind of similar to gcse's so in terms of which band is considered good it's kind of different to gcse's so since everyone taking the bmat is obviously applying for medicine the standards are pretty high the average applicant who receives an offer gets a five five is considered a good mark and good enough to get you into university obviously this may differ if you're aiming for a higher achieving university but most of them a five would be considered good you can get decimals so 5.2 5.3 etc so i'm just going to go a bit into depth into each of the sections now and just give you some like tips on how to start working through those so section one is called aptitude and skills i believe and it includes data questions problem solving questions and understanding arguments questions data and graph questions you'll have a graph a table some piece of data and you'll have around five to six multiple choice questions after each piece of data to work through these it can be quite daunting when they give you a massive table like when i first saw in the book they were like yeah they'll give you a piece of data i thought you know the gcsc maths they just give you like three little columns and like five rows and i was like it's come it's come half the page was full look at the questions first to see which data from the graph or table is relevant to what you need to work out so if you just try and read through the whole table and look at the gist of things you will waste a lot more time than reading through the questions and realizing you only really need to look at two rows and also the maths um can be quite complicated when you write it out and work out what you have to do in your head or on paper so looking to eliminate certain answers first can help you in working out which answer is correct and then sometimes working backwards is quicker than working forwards so say you eliminated two answers because the magnitudes are wrong they were like in tens of thousands and you only need it to be in hundreds so now you have three answers to work with and sometimes it can just be quicker to work from the answer and see if you can get back to the beginning worst comes to worst you're taking too much time on it tick around an answer and move on the next kind of section in skills and aptitude is problem solving so we're problem solving it kind of reminds me of the questions at the end of a GCSE maths paper like they're really words you have to just get your head around them a lot of them involve shapes and things like that or this car is this many meters from this traveling at this distance so one of the ways I found to help me most with this since the questions were so varying was to make sure I'm drawing diagrams and labeling them so if they're talking about a car is on this road it's traveling at this speed it's accelerating at this speed, it's this far away from this item and this item is far away from the next car. Working this all out in your head and piecing together the image in your head can be quite difficult and sometimes it's just a lot clearer to put it down on paper and that can help you work out which maths is necessary for you to be doing quicker and therefore complete the question quicker. So that's just something to help you a bit with problem solving. The only section left in aptitude and skills is understanding arguments so for understanding arguments questions uh, um, opinion is given and then they have a few questions underneath and some of the common questions to ask after the statement is which of these statements strengthens or weakens the argument um, which is the underlying assumption made for the um, right to create this opinion or look out for words like always or never because a lot of the time they come before statements that are partially true therefore if it says always but the statement is only partially true you can rule that out completely section two now is scientific knowledge and applications but when i heard about this section i was actually so happy because it's all gcse sciences and maths and i take all of those subjects for a level so i was like oh i'm doing an a level this isn't going to be easy i'm doing so much harder stuff now i'm going to breeze through this section but the problem for this section for most people is not difficulty it's time so if you think about it you have not the quick one markers in a gcse quest exam question you have maybe three four five markers in a gcse question but you have one minute to complete it so 
a lot of the time you know what you need to do but it's just about completing it in as quick a time as possible and for this I would say um, practice your mental maths just try do these questions in timed conditions earlier if you don't take one of the sciences or maths for a level and you're a bit worried that you don't remember the GCSE content properly there is a syllabus for BMAT science on their website I'll um, put the link in the description and this kind of just has everything that they could possibly test you on and just brushing yourself up on that will just help you a bit more confident before the exam but more likely than not you'll know everything make sure you complete every multiple choice question because it's not negatively marked you can't get negative marks if you get it wrong so there's nothing to lose really so the final section of the BMAT is section three the essay I know essays are not my strength and I was really worried about having to write an essay on the spot about any topic and that helps determine if I go to medical school. So I was very scared about this but I practiced a lot, got a bit more confident and yeah I do have some tips on this still even if it isn't my personal favourite. The structure of this is you have 30 minutes to write one side of A4 paper. Um, they give you kind of like a little box within the A4 page and you cannot go over that box you can't put pto and continue writing on the other side it doesn't they won't mark it they mark you slightly differently to the other two sections so you'll get a number and a letter in your marker section three the number is um about your content and the quality of content you have a three is considered good a uh, four and five is like exceptional you can get 4.5 or i think you can get 0.5s in every interval there and you also get a letter and this is about how good your English is um, it doesn't mean you have to use any fancy vocabulary or anything um, assuming you don't make too many spelling or grammar mistakes punctuation is good then you should be getting an A so a 3A is considered a good mark for section 3 they give you three questions for section 3 and you only pick one of them to write about the questions are usually a quote or a statement by someone and then some bullet points underneath. Okay, the structures of the essay, make sure you cover all of the bullet points because even if you cover all of the bullet points that they give you and your answers are very, very basic, you still have to get a three. Even if you write the most beautiful essay you've ever seen, you've ever written in your entire life, if you only cover two of the bullet points instead of three, the maximum you can get is a two. So make sure you cover all of the bullet points. The bullet points are usually um, explain the quote or explain the statement. And this is kind of where you describe the basis of where the statement is coming from, what the opinion is, what the um, author or writer's standpoint is in their argument. Then you usually agree and write a small paragraph agreeing with the statement but a lot of the time they don't want you to dwell on the agree side they want you to write a good counter argument and then um, make a nice summary you always have to have a summary there a way that I would say you can practice is just write honestly I was really scared to start because I was like I haven't written an essay in so long honestly it doesn't matter just practice by yourself i wrote like five essays by myself and looked over them for myself before i even got anyone else to look at them so you can find so many practice questions online i think there's a lot of question banks i think the medic portal has some if it does i'll put the question bank in the description if not i'll find another website with the question mark and put it down below um, the book I showed you before this one does have some questions, example essays they have and also they just have some questions that don't have example essays. So pick some of them and just start writing. Make sure you cover all the bullet points but that's it, just write. And then once you've written them and you want to share someone else, ask a teacher maybe. I'm sure there'll be plenty of teachers who will be happy to read it through. They don't need to know the scientific content. They can just check if it flows correctly, if the spelling and grammar and everything is correct because this is what's gonna get you your letter grade. And then they can show you how you can strengthen your argument a bit more. Things that can strengthen your argument are adding examples in each of your points. And this is a lot easier said than done when you don't know what kind of question can be asked. 
some of the questions are kind of science related and about um, the pursuit of knowledge and it's like really philosophical some of them are about medicine and about ethics about consent stuff like that the topics vary very um, greatly so it can be really hard to think of examples if you can't think of examples do not make them up that's something I cannot stress enough because the BMA examiners they have time you know they actually have time they fact check everything you put down and if they find out you've made up a figure or you've just made up a quote or a fact or something they will give you a big fat zero honestly it's not worth it it's better to put no examples than to put a false example because you're just gonna jeopardize your whole mark a lot of the examples i used were from my medicine through time um topic of history gcse so linking your question if you can to a subject you've studied in the past can help you write a lot more fluently because you can link it to things you know a lot about you can link in small facts another thing is don't underestimate planning since you have to cover all the bullet points what i did was i wrote down the bullet point and i annotated a bit underneath it on which example i was going to include for each bullet point and just kind of write a brief sentence about each bullet point so you know that when you're going through and you start getting into the flow you're not missing anything out you don't need to fill the entire page to get a 4.5 or a 5. i've seen examples that are very very short and they still got fives because of the quality of their arguments which they gained through planning well that was all the points and tips and whatever i have for you today if you have any more questions, hit me up in the comments, Instagram DMs, whatever. If you're doing your BMA, let me know how you're doing, how your prep is going. And yeah, I wish you all the best in your exams and going back to school and everything, getting back to education. It feels like it's been so long. But yeah, have a good week and I'll see you in the next one.